Cool. Live. Ready? Yes. All right. Let's well, do this. Well, welcome everybody. This is Rich and that's Ryan. And we're with Music Medic and today is our Wednesday uh, wisdom educational section where we share tips and tricks and uh, any sort of techniques in repair with certain types of tools that we make or that we don't make. And um, today we're going to talk about different heat sources and using them in instrument repair. So Ryan's going to give you a rundown of some of the different products that he's used in the past and that we used in the repair shop. And we'll take a couple of questions and then um, and that'll probably do it. Yeah, I, I think the, the first thing we should probably go with here is make sure safety first, folks. <laughs> We are dealing with the heat sources here, open flames. We're dealing with flammable, you know, uh, uh, chemicals here. Um, so make sure you have some kind of fire extinguisher. Uh, hopefully at hand, at least you know where it is and that it's up to date. And this this is good to go. So we're <laughs> we're good. We're safe. So it's safety good. first. Um, I will say fire extinguishers when you're dealing with with open flames. Um, I guess the first one to start with is is probably one of the oldest, um, you know, ways of of using a heat source is the alcohol burner. Mm -hmm. Okay, or alcohol lamp. Um, and here, what, what it is, it's just you use some kind of alcohol fuel, and this in this case would be denatured alcohol. Um, you would put that in, and it has a wick similar to, obviously, a lamp. And you would just ignite that, and this is what would actually control the flame. So you need a little less flame, you would retract the wick some. If you need a little bit more flame, you would expose a little bit more. And I like using the alcohol lamp um, for a heating source when I'm dealing with things that don't need a very high temperature. So if I'm dealing with things like, uh, you know, a clarinet, you know, uh, you know, a joint like this where I can heat up this pad cup um, and I don't want it to get too hot because I don't want to scorch or burn the surrounding material, whether it's plastic, ABS, uh, grenadilla wood, um, whatever it may be. So this, I like the alcohol lamp because it's not a very hot, hot flame. It still is a, a open flame, but I can really control it a little bit better than let's say like a, you know, a blazer butane torch. Um, one thing I will say when you're, when you are heating, especially clarinet pad cups is to have the pad cup not be directly over top of the flame. You want to have it slightly tilted so that the flame, the heat rises. So if I'm heating this pad cup up right here and I have it over top, I'm, I just slightly tilt it. And that way it reduces the risk of burning the surface of the clarinet. Um, another thing you can use it for is if you're working with bladder pads, let's say on you know a clarinet or trochee pads on a flute. Um, if you get this, this too hot, that bladder skin will actually rupture. It will rip, it will scorch. Yep. Um, so using an alcohol lamp is very, very nice um, and convenient for doing that. Uh, another tip I will tell you is unlike the other torches, you can usually hear when, when the butane is running, has a little hiss. You don't really hear that so much with the, with the alcohol lamp. So just make sure when you're done that you cover it up. Mm -hmm. Okay. So that, that's my, my one safety tip for you. So, yes. Cool. So that's the alcohol lamp. What about uh, gas torches? Absolutely. We're, we're, we're then go on to like a, a butane torch like this. And what this does, this use, uses refillable butane that you actually have a little port at the bottom. You would just install this or put this in like, like so. It would fill up. Uh, and then this is what you would use for your now heating source. And you can see you would just need some kind of ignition source. You can adjust the flame like so. Um, and this is great for, you know, like I said, for, for smaller areas, if you are going to heat up a clarinet pad cup like so, you can use a small butane torch like this. Um, next would be a butane torch that has its own self-ignition. Hmm. Makes it very handy. You don't have to have a, a lighter present. It makes it very easy to, to ignite. It has a little stand. You can lay it on the bench like so. And it is good for, you can pretty much do just about everything with this. Um, you can, you know, you can pad, you know, clarinet, flute, you can pad on saxophone, you can remove pads. Um, you can even in some cases do some light soldering jobs with a butane torch. Hmm. Um, if you move up to a handheld torch like this, you can definitely do some more heavier duty soldering jobs. Um, this is just a blazer hand torch. And again, you can use it for padding clarinet, pad saxophone, you can remove pads. You can even do some, some medium weight soft solder jobs. Another reason I like this torch is you can lay it on end and you can actually just hold the pad cup 
over the heat like so. So this is nice. Hmm. So um, you have even bigger options where you can go with a torch like this, and you can see the hose that's actually attached, and it goes to a separate tank. And this is a um, acetylene torch. Um, if I can just kind of show you a sneak preview down here, down below, you can see it is this tank right here, okay, right next to the, the fire extinguisher. So here is the acetylene tank. Here is the regulator, uh, the on-off valve. Uh, another tip I will give you when you when you do have a big tank like this is make sure you secure it to something sturdy. Uh, you just don't want this this tank to sit here wobbly back and forth because if this falls and this this regulator breaks off, you're going to have a really bad time. Uh, so make sure you have it. You can see just for this demo, I went ahead and secured it to the to the the leg of this bench. So this thing is not going any, anywhere. So again, safety first when you're dealing with open flames. Um, but this torch here has a variety of removable tips that you can get. Sometimes they come with it. What I have here as far as size-wise is a double zero, which is the smallest tip, a single zero, and then I believe this is a one, size one tip. Um, to start with the large to show you what that looks like, Again, this doesn't have any kind of self-igniting, so you would have to use some kind of either a striker to ignite it. Okay, or you can use, a lot of times they make these self-igniting like so. That, that looks a lot safer. Yes, way safer <laughs> than getting your hand near this. And plus, a lot easier you can light it just like that. So these, these are very handy. Um, but the, 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 the different size tips have different usage. Um, for the largest tip, I can get in and I can do a lot of soldering jobs. Okay, If I'm soldering larger areas, like on a bow of a saxophone, I can do that. I can even get into where I'm doing some, um, some light, small brazing okay, on key work. Um, I wouldn't necessarily use a flame this big to pat a saxophone okay. or a clarinet. Uh, it's a little overkill. For that, I might move to maybe, let's say, the middle size. What number tip. is that? This is the zero. This is the, the single zero. Okay. So for this, this is a good size. You can control the flame here on the side with this knob so I can bring it down like so. And this is a good size for padding on a saxophone. Um, you can do a lot of general soft soldering uh, work with this. Um, we can even go into the smaller tip, which is the double zero or the double aught. And you can see how small that flame is. And this is this is a great size flame for general padding. You can do just about all saxophones with this. Um, you can do a clarinet if you're careful. Okay, just being very careful to direct that heat. Um, and then again, you can do some light soft soldering jobs with this. So this is your acetylene torch. Um, so yeah. Hmm. Those are, I think, kind of the overview, the rundown of different heating sources. I do have some tips and tricks. Do we have time for tips and tricks? Tips and tricks, yeah. We sure. do. Okay. Um, so one tip uh, that you can do is, well, with, with penetrating oil here. Okay. A lot of people ask, you know, how do you get, you know, stuck parts unstuck? Well, this is a, a tunable neck from Khan. It's very common to have these frozen uh, you know, just won't even move this, this, oh, the this, auto tuner. the, yeah, uh, it won't, it won't move at all. So you can use a little bit of penetrating oil, drip that in. I just put this in a little needle oiler. You can drip that in and then you can use a heat source to actually fan that penetrating oil and it thins it out and it works it into those tighter areas. Okay. Hopefully over time gets into that, those tighter areas and then you can loosen them back up. So that's, that's one tip when using an open flame some heat source and some penetrating oil. Cool. Can you also, uh, can you also talk about the, like protecting a pearl and what you can do with that? Like Absolutely. Yeah. You can, you, sometimes you'll have to, to heat up a pad cup. Like this is an A key off a saxophone. You have the, the bis pad cup underneath and you don't want to either burn the pearl or the felt underneath. You can, you can make one of these guys right here, which this is just a pad cup that has been soldered to a brass rod. And what you can do is, is if I have to heat up that pad cup, I can use this to cover up the pearl and the felt. Uh, if you don't have one of those, you can just use a spare saxophone key. Okay. <laughs> um, it is also handy when you're heating up pad cups that have the felt attached to them. 
Okay, a lot of vintage saxophones have that. So as you're heating it up, you don't want to burn that felt. You can, same thing, use your pad cup protector, like so, like so, and you heat it up. And that way, you don't burn your felt. Hmm. Well, yeah. Very cool. Well, Ryan, thank you for bringing us through all of that yeah, info. Yeah. I, I do, I've got like a couple of messages here uh, with questions. Um, for the for the fuel, for the alcohol lamp, mm -hmm. what do we normally use? What can you use? That's a good question. Yeah, normally you would use denatured alcohol and they sell this as, you know, a lot of times torch fuel. Yes, there it is. Clean burning torch fuel. Uh, people have asked, can you use rubbing alcohol? It's one of those, if it's, if it's a flammable liquid, you can use it in the alcohol lamp. With some exception, I wouldn't use some high test stuff. Like I, I would not use lacquer thinner. Okay. I probably would not use jet fuel. Or gasoline. You would not use gasoline. <laughs> That's a no-no. Um, I would stick to your more flammable, the, like I said, the denatured alcohol. But, but uh, another tip is you can use, in a pinch, and I know because I have, um, you can use any kind of grain alcohol like Everclear um, because it is a flammable, clean burning, hopefully, uh, uh, liquid. So, but like I said, just stick to the denatured alcohol. That's your safest bet for your fuel in your alcohol lamp. And make sure you cover it up when you're done. Okay. Very cool. Yes. Yeah, it makes for an interesting Friday there with the it old, does. Uh, Everclear and the, and the alcohol it lamp. It does, yeah. Oh, my goodness. Uh, all right, I do have another question here, Ryan. Uh, for brazing, you talked to the Smith torch. You talked a little bit about mm -hmm. that. Can you braze with that, or what do you recommend for brazing or, or silver soldering for, for instrument repair? That's a good question. For, for brazing, brazing is anything over 800 degrees. Um, and what I tend to use for some light key brazing, if I have to maybe assemble a key here and, and you know brace this part to this, I, I will at times use the largest torch tip on the acetylene torch. Um, if I need to braze larger areas, um, or if I need just a little bit more heat, let's say the, the parts are a lot thicker, um, I will actually use a, a different style torch. It's a two gas torch. It's um, oxygen and propane. Um, and if the torch it looks very similar to this. It's a little bit smaller, but rather than having one hose come up here, it actually has two hoses. One is running from the line from the oxygen tank, and another is running from the propane tank. Um, and it mixes within here and it gives me a much, much hotter flame. Um, and that's typically what I will use if I'm brazing or silver soldering, hard soldering pieces together. Cool. And then uh, the, the last question that I'm seeing here is induction heaters, or uh, they call them pad cup heaters in the band repair trade. Um, the, the main question is, th th because those are the kinds that have like two nodes or something that touch mm -hmm. a key. Do they, then they, there's various forms of those uh, on the, you know, that you can get. Do they leave a mark on the key at all? Um, from what I've heard is I don't have a lot of personal experience in using these, but what it is essentially is it's, you touch it to the pad cup and, and through induction heating, it actually will heat the pad cups up. So you're not actually using an open flame, which is great if you're using it around plastic body mm. or wood bodied or, you know, wood body or plastic body piccolos. Um, so it's a very safe way to just really control your heat where you're only heating up that, that pad cup. Um, if the torch, if the, I'm sorry, if the, the tips are clean, um, I think a lot of times it, you don't see a mark. It's, it's very minimal. Um, there is obviously a chance of when you're using butane or any kind of open flame and you're dealing with lacquered instruments, there is a chance of burning lacquer. So you have to be very careful in your heat control. Mm. A lot of even heating, don't hold this in one spot for an extremely long period of time because that will burn your lacquer. Cool. Well, I think that's all the questions that I have. I think um, we get some great comments here. People are changing pads. I'm awesome. glad we're here to help. Well, guys, that's going to do it for us. The one thing that we didn't talk about was the Vortex Air Torch. That is our hot air heater. Uh, so if you're concerned about burning lacquer, uh, we're going to do another video on Friday going over. Well, be careful. Don't mm -hmm. knock that fire extinguisher over. <laughs> uh, we're going to do a, uh, a feature on all of the things that are encompassed with the, uh, let me get this out of the way there. Uh, with the air torch, we're going to go over all the technical aspects and how to use 
uh, a hot air device um, in woodwind repair. So that's going to be our Friday product feature. This is Wednesday Wisdom. I'm Rich. This is Ryan. Um, if you have any questions, feel free to message us or email us at musicmedic.com. And um, until next time, happy repairing. Again, why do I got to?